The biggest creators are all using sneaky editing tricks to grab and hold attention, and in turn, get more views. The thing is, you may not even notice them, but your brain does. And the algorithm, well, it rewards them. And when I say them, I include myself too, because I've used these same editing tricks in my last few YouTube videos, and they've outperformed everything else on my channel. It's crazy. So now the question is, what exactly are these editing tricks, and why aren't more people using them? Let's break them down one by one. And more importantly, I'll show you exactly how to use them in CapCut. These aren't just some flashy, gimmicky tricks. They serve a purpose, and that purpose is to stop the scroll, hold your viewer, and ultimately make your edits feel pro level. Number one. For number one, we're diving straight into the deep end. This is creative sound design. There's many different pillars you could say of sound design, but creative sound design is the thing that builds tension. It's the thing that holds suspense and grabs your viewer so they can't look away. These are things like risers, whooshes, hits, and drones. They deepen the emotion of your edit. And the cool thing for us CapCut editors is CapCut has a ton of them built into their audio library. But give me a second here. Let's count how many sound effects and more importantly, creative sound effects Mr. Beast used in the first 20 seconds of one of his latest YouTube videos. I am currently on an island infested with snakes, but I'm visiting way deadlier places. Like scaling a mountain has killed thousands of cage with and so much more. All starting in this cage. 13. In the middle 13 creative sound effects in the first 20 seconds of his YouTube video. That's crazy, but he's not the only one who does this. Check this out from MKBHD. And then just give you little strategic hits of dopamine here and there to keep you plugged in as long as possible. The sound effect that he used helps build suspense as we reach the conclusion of his point. Head over to your audio tab and go to sound effects. Here, you can search for all the important creative sound design tools. place creative sound design at specific moments in your edit. Risers for when you're leading up to something important. Drones are great for building tension. Wishes for things like camera movement and animations. And lastly, hits after you say something important. Kind of like a mic drop. I like to think of creative sound design like the underneath of an iceberg. The audience can't necessarily see it, but they know it's there. And most importantly, your edit feels more professional. Now the second sneaky trick is visual continuity. Now you may have heard of it, or you may not have, or you may have heard of something like match cutting. Whether you have or haven't, pay attention and check this out. This is a video from Johnny Harris, and I want you to lock your eyes on the exact center of the screen for his opening sequence. Did you notice what Johnny did yet? By the way, this video did 2.2 million views in the last couple weeks. If you haven't noticed it, all the information that we need in order to understand what this video is about is directly in the center of the screen, leading to visual continuity. Do you think this is random? I don't think so. I think Johnny does it because he knows how to do it, but more importantly, why? Johnny knows that too much eye movement in the first 30 seconds is both exhausting and frustrating, and he wants to reduce the amount of visual discontinuity before his viewer is hooked. A lack of visual continuity creates friction, like this. You're looking here, then here, and then here. It's not nice. Tell me, how much nicer is this sequence? Let's say we're trying to keep everything center frame. Our shot before has our subject relatively in the center and our shot after has something in the center. And in this shot, our character is off on the left third of the frame. What we're gonna do is go to our video and basic tab and play with our transform. We're gonna need to increase the scale of the video and then we're able to drag our character into the center. Again, our goal here is to create a visually seamless, visually continuous, con continuous <laughs> intro so that our viewer gets hooked. Once we have them hooked, we can make informed decisions to break the monotony of that visual continuity. A lot of words there, but we can do that to 
liven up the spirit a little bit and have the viewer look somewhere else. The general rule of thumb here is to try keep your main subject or detail within 10% of the previous frame. Now, some of this relies on when you're shooting it and how you compose the shot. As editors, we get to work with other elements like animations, stickers, and text. With these, the same rule applies. Try not to have your viewer look way off to the side and keep your elements within roughly 10% of where your subject is. As important as these eight tricks that I'm sharing are, unfortunately, they're just eight tricks. If you want so many more tricks, check out CapCut Lab. It's a full CapCut course that I've developed and it's the first link in the description. It combines pretty much everything I know about editing into a succinct, well put together CapCut course and it's the fastest way that you're gonna learn how to edit like a professional inside of CapCut. This third one is something you've probably heard of. It's the most common form of cutting. It's called a jump cut. Almost every YouTube video that I've watched has some form of jump cut, but there's a correct and an incorrect way to do this. Simply put, jump cuts are mainly used to trim portions of silence so that we can tighten up the edit. How you're gonna do it is zoom closer on the shot you wanna cut, find your endpoint and create a cut, and then find the first frame of when you start again. Now we can go ahead and delete the middle portion of silence. For the most part, we think it's just about dragging these two clips together. Well, it's not. There is a better and more effective way to do a jump cut. For your jump cut, you're gonna have to test which works better. On your first clip, you can either shorten the top half of the video clip and then drag the two clips together. Super important for when there's things like See how seamless that jump cut sounded. Alternatively, it may work better to shorten the top end of your second clip, clip B, and then drag your clips closer together. Super important for when this. I can see that that wasn't quite as seamless as when we did the L cut. These two types of cuts are called L and J cuts. For this example, the L cut worked better where we trimmed the back portion of our first clip. The goal here with a jump cut is to reduce those portions of silence, but not have your cut seem too abrupt. A jump cut, much like in the name, is gonna jump. But the point here is we wanna create as seamless as a cut point as possible. This next one is a sneaky way YouTubers communicate vital information or a comparison while maintaining visual continuity. I call it the side screen swipe. Here's an example from MKBHD or even from Ali Abdul when he does a side-by-side -side comparison. Have your main clip and the other clip that you wanna swipe in. On my top layer, which is the clip I wanna swipe in, I'm gonna go ahead and drag that over to the side that I wanna start it swiping in from. I'm gonna use the left-hand side of the screen. Let's go ahead to our transform tab and create a transform keyframe. Then using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm gonna go a little bit ways ahead and add another transform keyframe. I can then go ahead and drag that to wherever I want it to be. Now between our keyframes, we have our side screen swipe in, but nothing happens to our main video and to be frank, it looks super amateur. Let's go ahead and fix this. Zoom into your timeline and on the first keyframe, where that first keyframe is of your top layer, go ahead on your bottom layer and create a transform keyframe. Then I'm gonna go to my second keyframe and create another transform keyframe. What I can then do is the same thing and drag it over to the point where we are still center on screen. You'll see when I play that, that we shift over and we have our new background where we can place text, come in. But again, let's refine this so it looks even better. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my keyframe animator because we're only changing the X value, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight those two keyframes. The change is marked by a diagonal line and I can go to our graph here and say quad ease. On my second keyframe, I'm then gonna drag that little dot slightly closer to my first keyframe. Let's go ahead and apply the same thinking to our bottom layer. We now have a super smooth slide across. This next sneaky trick is dynamic camera movement, made popular by Mr. Who's the Boss. He uses it in almost every single one of his intros to create a very visually dynamic and intriguing intro. On your video, go over to the effects and search camera move. Find the first one that shows up and drag it onto your clip. Now you'll see if you swipe across, this looks terrible. Let's go ahead and drag our speed down, drag your strength down as well, drag blur all the way to zero, drag glow to zero and decrease your size as well. You'll see when I play this, it now looks like we're being shot handheld and our frame is changing in size. We have a bit of motion blur and it's a really cool dynamic movement effect. There's also another tool that adds some dynamism. In your search bar, search for zoom lens. Instead of dragging zoom lens directly onto your clip, go ahead and drag it onto your timeline and extend it a little bit. We can change the range to decrease how much it zooms in and speed to decrease how fast it zooms in. Let me show you what this does. 
Zoom lens creates a really smooth zoom in and then zoom out. We can change the point that we want it to zoom out by changing the speed. You'll see that as I drag the speed slower, that zoom out point shifts further along. These are two tricks to emulate popular YouTubers and create smooth, dynamic movement. This next trick is called a picture-in-picture -picture effect, and this is Ali Abdul's favorite tool for when he's showing something but still wants to be on screen. Go ahead and drag a background under the video that you wanna do picture-in-picture -picture with. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this middle portion where I want myself to be cropped out. Select it on that, go to video and mask. Select add mask and we can create a rectangle or circle mask. For this example, I'm gonna create a rectangle mask. We can then change the size of that mask to fit us in and something to add a pro touch is add some curve of the edge. We can then go back to basic and drag ourselves wherever we want. We could even go ahead and make us smaller and have us sit on the left like that. Now when we play our video, you'll see we go from full screen to being on the side, that plays out, and then we jump back to full screen. Our seventh sneaky trick is the swipe down title screen. And this is a great way to maintain visual continuity and justify having text come on your screen. Have the background that you wanna use in your video and let's create a transform keyframe. Using my arrow keys, I'm gonna scrub a little bit ahead and create another transform keyframe. On my first keyframe, I'm gonna slide this screen to the top, and then when I play that, you'll see that our screen slides down. Once again, I'm gonna open up my keyframe animator, and instead of using my X now, because we're just dealing with Y, I'm gonna select my Y keyframes and create a quad ease graph. You'll see now, we have a super smooth slide down title screen. Now this leads us to our last sneaky trick. Last but not least, this is used all over YouTube from huge channels like Vox, where they draw attention to a certain part of the screen. Ali Abdal, who highlights his text all the time, and most importantly, the biggest YouTuber out of all of these, Matt Louie. There's a couple different ways that I find effective and professional to highlight or draw attention to certain text. Let me show those to you. This first way is by using CapCut sticker under the emphasis tab. I love the circle. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it underneath our text layer. I can shrink its size and change its rotation slightly to make sure it fits around so. You'll now see when I play that, we highlight the word so. One thing though is this keeps animating. So I'm gonna find the first point where our animation finishes. I'm then gonna create a compound clip and then create a freeze frame. I can go ahead and delete that back portion. You'll see now that our sticker animates and then we're left with a static animation. Something that I've been loving are chalk style shapes and lines. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this layer onto our timeline. You'll see that we have a white chalk strip. I'm gonna go to my adjustment tab and change my temperature to be yellow. I can then shrink the size under so. What's great is we can now play this and I've just highlighted the word so. I've been using these chalk style animations to draw emphasis in a lot of my recent edits. Clients are loving it, and I even used it in the CapCut Lab promo, and so many of you had a great response. So find cool chalk style animations and place them to emphasize certain words. The next way to emphasize certain things is by doing a color change. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate our text layer and delete any animation that we have. Let's go ahead and set that to none. We can then drag this to the certain portion that we want that color change to kick in, go to our text, and change the color of the text to what we want it. I think the yellow that we had for our underline looked really nice, just like that. I'm then gonna create a compound clip by clicking Alt-G, and we can then, on our compound clip, say crop ratio. I'm gonna go ahead and crop easy out, and I'm gonna crop its out, so we're just left with so. Let's click confirm. You may need to do some subtle readjusting in terms of placement, but now when I go ahead and play that, the word so is now yellow. We can go ahead and drag the back portion for wherever we want that effect to finish, and it goes back to normal. And the last way to do text emphasis is by using a highlight effect. Now I have spoken about this multiple times in the channel, but if you haven't seen it, this is for you. Go ahead and create a duplicate text layer. And once again, let's go ahead and turn off our animation. On our text, we're gonna go ahead and create a bunch of underscores, just like that. We can then scroll down to uniform scale and turn uniform scale off. Let's go ahead and scale our height and make it as thick as we need in order to cover the word so. We can then go ahead and scale our width to just over so. Go over to animation and find wipe right. That's gonna animate our layer. We can then go ahead and change the color to our yellow. Let's compound this. Go over to your blend mode and select darken. This is gonna work great when you have black text underneath and it looks like our word so is now being highlighted. So these are the eight sneaky tricks that are applied in almost every single YouTube video. Apply them to yours, you'll create better edits, but you'll also get more views. I'll see you in the next video.